Okay, so today we're going to make clay western saddle treats. And um, this is one of the two ways that I make my trees, um, either through a polymer clay, this is either Sculpey or Fimo, um, something that's an oven baked to hardness clay, and make sure it is um, oven baked to hardness. There's clays out there that if you oven bake them, they just melt because um, they're not uh, they're not really the polymer clay. Um, and you don't need very much. Uh, one brick, um, the small bricks, and you can do them in any color you want. Um, this particular clay I have here um, is a super sculpy firm, and um, it's just because it's what I have. Um, so rather than go buy something, I'm going to use what I have, but any of the clays will work. This is a lot firmer, so it's a little bit harder to work. I started in my spare time to sculpt just to, you know, something new to do, and, um, and I find for sculpting uh, animals, this is actually uh, a better clay. So that's what I have. All right, and um, this has been worked, so it's nice and warm, um, and it's it's ready to be used. The next thing you'll need is the pattern, and you can go ahead and download the pattern and book. This was the first book I ever wrote, because um, somebody, people on the boards were saying, well, how do you make saddle trees? And so I created this pattern specifically to answer that question. Um, I actually don't have the book in print anymore, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and um, offer the, a digital copy, reduced price digital copy of the book in association with this video. Um, there's, um, I, the pattern is actually laid out in the four different um, size ranges. Um, T1, which is your standard traditional, you know, one nine scale, and then reductions for T2, which is your traditional size ponies and Arabs, the short backed models. And then there's T3, which is your first size classic, and T4, which is your 112 scale. And then um, there's actually T5 too, if you want to do it for like little bits. And I have um, two different pommel patterns. So you got one seat, two different pommel. I'll show you a third one that's not in the book, so you'll only get that in the video. But three ways to do the front of the seat. And what I did on these is I printed them out on cardstock, and then I just cut out the size that I'm gonna make the trees for, and I'm using the T1, so it's easier to see. Okay, so you'll need that. The next thing you're gonna need is a working surface, and because these are gonna be baked, I recommend um, aluminum foil. So. You'll need a sheet of aluminum foil. You can consider this your armature. And you don't need, I mean, this is what, about four and a half, five inches. And um, half it. And then you can probably get two out of this. But since our trees aren't that long, I want about three inches of work surface. Um, so I actually almost folded that in half twice, and then I'll go ahead and fold it over one more time, and um, that's going to be my work surface, but that's flat. I need something round, so I'm just going to take a water bottle, okay, it's just a regular water bottle, and um, you, can, you can put it on a model if you want. You're not going to bake the water bottle, but you want something that's going to give you a curve. So I put that on there, and then I just use rubber bands on the very back side. So on the front side, I'll just hold it in place so I can see that I'm not even zoomed in. So here we go, zoomed out. So there's going to be my work surface. I actually find uh, a full water bottle stays in place better um, than an empty one. An empty one has wants to roll. Um, and then I can also stand it up and put it aside, less likely to fall over. Another thing is going to be your baking uh, what are you going to bake it on? Um, I'm going to use a pie tin. Maybe not this one because I was using it for painting. But basically a pie tin so you can, you know, put them in there. But you can use a cookie sheet. But I've got that ready. Um, let's see. Anything else about the Sculpey? Yeah, Sculpey has a tendency sometimes to get dry. And then it's kind of crumbly. And um, it's, so what you can do is, I mean, obviously they have this here, which is... Um, this is the Sculpey version. I don't know what the Fimo version is, but basically it's it's a way it's a softener and what it is It's just vegetable oil So if you've got vegetable oil just get a little bit on your finger rub it on there and then work it in and that usually helps it You know get its pliability. Don't use water use a little bit of vegetable oil Okay, as far as tools 
Um, I don't think I need this much, so I'm going to half this. And, and what, the first thing we're going to do is, of course, roll it flat and try to roll it flat without any um, without any lines in it. So um, this um, is a is a dowel for polymer clay. It's an acrylic one. You could use a rolling pin. You could just use a regular wood dowel that's nice and smooth. Um, this is, you know, what I have. So we're going to roll it. And we don't really want it to stick to the surface, and that's going to be kind of key. Um, but we want to roll it out as even as possible. So I flip it a lot. And we want to get it to about the thickness of a dime. So let's see. And then it's a little bit high, so... Let's see, it just kind of... Working it. Now remember, this is just the structure for this saddle. It's not going to look like a resin tree, so don't try to make it look like a resin tree. We're just creating a simple uh, structure for your western saddles. Let's see, it shouldn't take too long. And then that's about right. So it's about the thickness of a dime. Um, that might be a little thick, but it's more like a nickel. I haven't made one of these in a while, so this is all relying on muscle memory here. Okay, so once you have it, make sure it's nice and loose. You can even, you know, wipe down your board so it doesn't get sticky. I'm using a piece of marble. Marble is good for working um, clay like this. Okay, and then we're just going to take our seat pieces, and there's three of them. You have your 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 base, uh, your seat. And then this is the rise. Now you can use multiples of these if you want, but show you. I'll show you the basics. So I already showed you one tool. The next tool I'm going to show you, and you should really kind of work more towards the center than the sides, because the sides have a tendency to be thinner. And so this clay, you can just wad it up. You're not, there's no waste on it. So um, there's a couple tools you can use for this. You can use the back side of an X-Acto knife, but not the sharp side, but the other side. Um, you just need something that's thin that can cut. So we could use this. And there's also one of my favorites, um, dental tools. This one here is really good for curves and stuff. So. Um, either will work. So right now I'll show you how this one works. And we can cut away because we are trying to trace it out and you get as close to it as you can. Oh no, my hand's too much in the way there. Okay. So then we can take out the pattern and then cut away the extra. So we can really carefully, now if you're gonna, you can pull it up here, I would do pull more towards the front. Uh, front is a little bit more forgiving than the back seat, so we can pull that up, that's one. And then we've got our other seat base, or we've got our seat base, our other pattern piece. And we'll go ahead and cut that out. And this one here is going to be totally covered up, so not that big of a deal. And we'll cut that loose. Pick it up from the front. And then we'll go ahead and do this riser. And this is to lift your pommel part up. I'm sorry, your seat part towards the pommel up where um, by the gullet, by the horn. I don't know, there's probably a scientific name for it or something. Right. I'll do a little triangle. All right, so the, we don't really need the rest of this. I should make more than one of these because I got to have to show you the three pommels, so I'll probably make a couple more. Now that we have that done, we're just going to take this extra, extra here and we're going to make like a log. I don't want to take about that much. You see that? I'm trying to get light without getting glare, so. Apologize. Try not to have a lot of shadow on it. So we're just gonna kind of log. It's gonna be maybe a quarter of an inch and 
circumference is about right. What is that? Eight. That's about right. And this is going to help build up our structure. So the first thing we'll do is and here we have our working surface. Hopefully, not too much glare on that. Again. We're going to take the seat base, and um, sometimes I'll draw a line, a center line, so that I know that I've got it centered. Helps with symmetry. So what I need to do is create a seat rise. That's better. So we're going to create what's called a seat rise, and we're going to take our. Justin. All right, now we'll start it right about here, and it's going to be on the inside. So you need um, you need the extra here of the edge for um, to hold your saddle piece, um, the rear jockeys in place. So we don't want to cover that up. So we're just going to kind of go there, and then I'll put a second one in here for support. Not very, you know, it doesn't have to be as pretty. You're not really sculpting or constructing. So I want to just kind of now make myself a wedge from this. So push down and connect these so that we get support for our seat. So I like the leather trees better. It's not a lot, lot less of guessing. That's too much right there, so I'll pull that off. Alrighty. So if we did it right, it should be the same all the way around. And we're going to bring these down. Okay. So this is really the only part that you're doing any sculpting. I'm just trying to. And the thing is also. Um, you can change the height of this. So this is gonna be a medium, almost could be a working saddle. You wanna do pleasure, you can um, increase the height and the, the shallowness in here. So you can, so if I wanted to force the seat up a little higher, then I can raise my cantle up. Uh, just a little. I'm going to do a little bit more of a log here. So, we can add another layer up here. And that'll force my seat up a little bit higher. So, it's for people who want to, you know, make it out of white. You can make, make it look like a rawhide made saddle. And then you might not even have to cover it. You know, that's a benefit of the resin trees is they have that smoothness so all right and because this isn't going to show in the saddles that I make I'm not too worried about you know little imperfections so then the next thing we'll do is take our seat and we're gonna oh nope take that back the next thing we have to do is the rise in the front and this you can um, you know for pleasure you can put like a little log right there and That'll lift the front up so that it, it's got more of a rise. And you really don't have to do much more than that. So now we have the rise in the front, we've got the support in the back. And then we cover it. I don't know if you saw that. So just, I just put it on. I didn't really even sculpt it in. I just put a log in the middle, straight in the middle, put the triangle right over it. Okay. So now we have, I don't know, see that? I don't want to go too fast here. So there's the, the rise for the front. And then you can, um, I'm looking for symmetry. And then you put this and this by pushing it in, you can go 
brushing it up. You now have, and however high you want to push it up. And if at any time you don't like what it looks like, so there's a little bit of lump there, and I don't like that lump, I'm just going to kind of, don't stretch it, just kind of roll it out of the way, and I'll push this down a little bit. So I don't like the way that looked. So, there you go. And the trick is symmetry. So you want to make sure that the back is that symmetry. And then I'm going to roll the sides a little bit. Again, this pattern was like, I don't know when I did it, 1999. And I used these trees for years. Years, 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 years. I could probably work it and make it a better pattern. Because I know so much more now than I did then. But ultimately, there's your seat. All right, and you can, like I said, you can make it a working saddle, make it a little bit flatter. More of a pleasure saddle is going to be up higher. Um, so whichever you prefer. And now is the time to decide it. Unlike the leather trees where the pattern itself can manipulate the leather, this is pretty much what it looks like. Okay, there you go. Now the reason why I push these down is because sometimes you have to actually cut some out of here depending upon the pattern. I think with Rio Rondo, you had to actually cut a little bit. Um, but um, there you go. Pretty cool seat. Yep, all right, that's why I'm gonna go ahead and stand the bottle up and put that aside. And then I'll show you your three different um, pommels. Sure, I don't know. So we'll go ahead and um, we'll start with this one. This one's gonna use your skinnier you know, dime width. Uh, well, they could make it a little bit thicker than that. Maybe about a nickel width. Roll on the clay. And we're going to use the center, not the sides, because we want to make sure the thickness is as even as possible. So that's about right. I know sometimes um, if you don't know, put a dime on either side, and you can use that to do your measuring, or a nickel, whatever, you know, whatever. They do that for baking, you know, they actually have dowels that you put in, so when you roll it, you get the perfect thickness, it's kind of cool. All right, so this one here, um, we're going to cut it out. This one is going to be a little bit more sculpting involved. So what we do, so we're gonna bend it, pull in the sides, however you want to do it. And you're really careful not to stretch this one too much. Put in your sides. connecting them together and then I'm just gonna fill in using you know whatever um, I think originally I would take like little balls of clay to support the and it's just really support something in the middle because we're going to have to find a way to support a horn. So, this one too big.
isn't really going to be whatever your favorite method is. So I'm not happy with that. So I'll just this is going to cover. So you want this outside here to be smooth, make it easier to cover your cover your pommel with Skyver. And what work that you feel comfortable doing, you just want to make sure you don't uh, stretch or over, um, or um, change the shape of the pattern. We're looking for symmetry. And then, you know, depending upon how comfortable you are with your sculpting skills, you could. Is because this is sculpty hard, it dry. If it gets warm, I mean, it gets cold, um, it becomes, becomes harder, so it really needs to stay in the heat to help work with it. So, depending upon your sculpting skills, if you look, this is your front, and the smaller hole is the back, right? Okay, so sometimes there's like a little lip here, um, and you could again, you don't have to do this totally for more advanced users, but you could work yourself in with a little lip there. I haven't done this in a while, so I'm trying to do it from memory. Um, so you can make this rounded, but then you really want that little lip. I don't want to spend too much time on this because this is an advanced feature, but I just want to show you that you can kind of get that lip that you can see. Oh, that'll give you that front, and it doesn't have to be too much. In fact, if it is too much, it might even be too weak. Because that's one thing also about this clay is that it's got a porcelain look, and it actually does break. It's not resin. Let's see how I've got just a little little lip there. Um, and if I had, I'd work it a little bit more. All right, but you get the idea. <coughs> and you could do this pretty much on any of these, um, but you don't have to. And I think that's that's you can still get results. Um, you know, just um, sometimes you want that little extra detail. All right, so there you go. And then to complete this tree, we would take, now you don't have to, you can just go ahead and, and um, bake it this way and then you got your two piece. Um, or you could then, um, if you like a one piece, go ahead and um, attach it, right? So those are your options. Either at this point, go ahead and attach it in there or leave it as a two piece and attach it um, kind of like the Rio Rondo way, where you, you do it um, after you've covered it. Um, and I've done it both ways. I actually prefer a one-piece clay tree, so I would I would work on uh, getting it attached the right way. Now, I do know that it works better when you attach it if you put, like, a, a supporting log underneath. So I would do, like, lift it a little bit and make sure that um, it's placed right. So let's say, for example, I would do something like, maybe like that, to make sure I got something for it to sit on. And then I would, if you can see, um, then that would fit, because you want the hole, I'm kind of working it too much, you want the hole to show in the back, right? That's, um, and, um, and then it would be nice and this, is, it should be a bit more like that. So put something in there to hold it up. Okay, so um, that's your first one. Let me show you horn. You could do this before or after. Um, perfectly up to you. Um, but you can take a piece of wire and it should be wire because it's going to bake and you don't want to put anything in there that's not going to you know, be able to handle the oven. And just um, find true center. I played with it too much. Oh, it's good. You're not worried about that. 
whatever. All right, so now we want to find center, and it's very hard to do with the camera in the way, but basically just that's going to be your horn. And you can, in this case here, you can either leave it in there, or you can take it out and use it later and put it in later. Um, you could also use a straight pin or whatever, but if you put it in now, I just it's just um, easier than trying to drill a hole later. So I'm always looking for symmetry, and I think I have it. I think I have it. Okay, so that's your first option. Um, the other option is a lot more similar to uh, the Rio Rondo. Um, but you use a thicker layer of clay instead of folding it over. So, let's see if I can work this a little bit. I hope I have enough. We're going to go for that quarter inch. We need, need thick, right? And I don't know what the current price is of a, a tree. Um, I know they run anywhere from like what six to fifteen dollars to get a pre-made either metal or um, resin tree and so this allows you to make those for pennies on the dollar so we're gonna all right I think it's ready wow are we still centered nope that's not even close to center So these last two have to do with the third dimension is the thickness. So, and you can determine how thick you want it. This is about a quarter of an inch. And um, that's gonna be a third dimension. That may even be too thin, but we'll take a look here. I didn't use this pattern very often, but we have, um, with this, instead of needing, you know how I said, uh, you had to put the, the riser clay here in the front for the other one. You would cut this exactly to whatever um, you would need the, the riser. So it's just a different option. Um, so let's see. Got that. I should have used my other cutter. This one doesn't work as well. This one works better for this because of the thickness. Mm -hmm. That should give you a pommel shape on the top. Okay, so that's pretty much it. <laughs> you could bake it like this. I think you get enough off of this side. You can see that. Mm. So that's pretty much it. You would, um, you know, bake it and then dremel it to smooth your edges. But that would, whatever the thickness of your clay is, would be the thickness of this. So we could even go thicker if you see. But if you get too thick, then it won't fit in the pattern. And um, that's why I didn't use this one very much. But this is a very simple way to, to create your, your pommel front, especially for beginners, um, because you can just kind of you know, pick what's the height that I need. You know, what's the height? Make sure that it's... See, I'm playing around with these too much. And then you can, um, let me see how see pretty easy um, because there's really not a lot of sculpting or work involved you just kind of figure out where you want it um, and then you can cut off these little tails you kind of connect them and then cut the tails right okay so don't get the same look um, the um, the whole horn thing pretty much the same thing uh, you find what your center is your center is and then you put 
that again like that and um, you can do this before you can do it after but that becomes that becomes your horn and then you of course bend it over and cover it Let's see how that works Are you okay with that so like now that it's on there and I know what I want I just go ahead and remove those and I can call that a saddle tree okay all right now we're going to show you the third type and this is even thicker and some of this is kind of eyeballing but I do need a straight edge so I didn't pull any So what is that, a quarter inch? It's about a quarter inch. Okay, you want to on a ruler, not eyeball everything, huh? All right, so now what we need is we need a strip. Let's put some air bubbles in it. Huh, it won't hurt anything. All right, and I'm gonna use, um, basically it's a card, it could be a credit card, an ATM card, whatever. And I'm just gonna do a punch straight down then make sure it is straight okay so I've got straight and then I, I only want this to be about whatever the width of this is so let's see we're gonna, so right about to there so what is that so what is that about a half an inch it's probably about a half an inch and um and this is way more than we need, but I'll just go ahead and cut it. You could probably do two of all of this, maybe three. All right, so that's about a half an inch, right? And then I really want some straight edges, so I'll go ahead and get myself a straight edge. Now, yeah, it's still gonna be too thick. So we're going to we're going to thin it a little bit. I wish I could tell you what the exact measurements are. I didn't put this in the book, by the way. This is something I I thought was just a little bit too much eyeballing, but it is another option. People do this with leather, by the way. They get thick leather and they cut a strip, and then they just. Just, yeah, I'm gonna cut that down a little bit. That means if I can't get the length I want. So I wanna go here, I wanna make an arch, right? It's an arch. I think that's about the right height of the arch. So now I'm gonna cut this. Oh, don't roll over that stuff. Ah, don't roll over. Okay, sorry, you didn't see that. Water bottle is rolling. All right, she just stood it up. So we're going to thin it even more. I'm not quite sure how straight that is. So now we're going to put it on here. And that is the third way that you can do your pommel. And of course, you want to kind of see how there's the hole there. I just want to take a little bit extra off. Yeah. And then you can, once it's in there, um, you know, you can, after, you know, after you bake these, you can dremel or, or even, you know, um, uh, sandpaper them if you want. 
So in this one, I think I would take a little bit out of here because that's not going to fit in my pattern. This will be a little too thick here. So I would take a little bit out of there. I would do it now. I could do it after. You know, it's been um, made after it's been baked. Um, so there's there's a little bit of sculpting involved with with the trees, but it's not you know critical if you have the right. Um, thickness of the clay you can just kind of fit it and um, but it is making a three-dimensional you know shape um, you could also if you wanted to put uh, aluminum foil I'm sorry not aluminum foil uh, aluminum can back here to support this if you wanted um, you can um, maybe on my saddle this here would have to come out I would need that for the, um, you can see all the fun I do, right? That's too much. Okay. I think that's it. Okay, the magic of video is that I've been gone and you have no idea how long. So it was about, oh, I don't know, maybe about half an hour. And what I did was trying to get all of these so you can kind of see what they look as a one piece. Um, I made so I've made three trees from that glob I show you at the very beginning. This is how much I have left, and um, and I haven't baked them yet. But these are my three trees. Yeah. All right. As you see, they're all on curved aluminum. I've pulled them off of the bottle. I have to show them to you one at a time. This camera's not great for. It's great for close up, but there's no. I'm already zoomed out as far as I can go. Okay. Um, so I made the three. Um, you can always keep them as two piece, and then, like I said, attach them during assembly if you prefer a two piece. Um, I learn to love one piece when I was making my own trees and I've played around with them um, so everybody got a whole piece now just so I know you've got the whole whoops I forgot to click willingly alrighty be really careful there alright so everybody oh, it's not even centered yeah the probably my favorite thing about clay trees is if you mess up it, just glob it all together and try again. It's not, um, it's not absolutely uh, critical that if it's, you know, if it's perfect and you don't like it, it's not like, you know, leather where you, that's it, you're done. You pretty much, you know, cut it out and you have to live with it. But um, let me show you what we've done here. So this was the um, real you know trying to look at the real rondo thing um because people like the shape of that tree and and it's it's resin so it's really hard to to perfect that in clay um but uh, i added a lip all i did was take a little little log of clay around the front and then kind of put it in place so that it gives me a little bit more structure on the front and i uh, kind of cleaned up these uh so they weren't so, so sharp right and then hopefully I got my tree doesn't look like it's centered. And symmetry is, is the biggest issue with clay trees. You have to get symmetry. So if you don't get it now, your tree's not going to be, your saddle's not going to be symmetric. All right, so we'll talk a little bit about um, how you make these uh, fit to your pattern. The most important thing to, uh, to remember is you want to shape the tree the tree to the pattern not the pattern to the tree and so I don't have a lot of pattern pieces out but let's say for example I wanted to use um, this pattern all right and this pretty much covers this is a great piece because it's everything so what I'd want to do is ask myself is it going to fit so I'll actually put it on here is that going to fit I should have left this in the bottle and I'll check and see how this, that's gonna fit really nicely, right? Then the other thing I'll ask is, okay, I have to put pins here as a way to hold my saddle together. Is that gonna be an issue? 
Now this is not the Rio Rana pattern. This is my pattern, my newest one that I haven't, it's not in any of my books. Um, but if you notice here, it, it's, it's gonna have to go straight through the tree. Um, so that would be an issue. And then the next thing I would look at, and you can do this wet or dry, um, is um, this is actually the seed itself. This piece here is gonna be, uh, this is supposed to be my Cheyenne cantle, my rolled cantle, and, and um, so I already know that the, there's just gonna be too much seat here. So if I was gonna make it for this particular pattern all the time, I would, I would modify this, um, and I would take some of that off. So I would probably go here and go, oh, look, that's gonna be too much. So I could either shorten it up, knock it off. Sorry, my dogs want in. There's the mom boys. Sorry, didn't mean to use it on you. Um, so I would, I could change the pattern, um, make my seat a little bit smaller back here, and um, and then this here would pin. The pins would go in where the indent is. So I I made a leather tree pattern for this. I didn't. It wasn't going to use my clay ones. So here's my leather tree pattern and it fits almost perfectly okay so and and in the back too so this tree goes to this pattern and you you can see that where um, this one here I didn't make specifically for my tree pattern uh, for my saddle pattern so I would have to make modifications either the pattern or to the tree afterwards or before so one of the trees I did was this one I was taking a look at how I can modify it to work with my saddle tree pattern and it looks like the front's good right that's gonna be a decent front um, but in order for it to really work back here I needed to get a little bit of clay out right where the pins would be and technically I, I would I would get rid of some of this uh, back here too because I know it's just too long for this pattern okay so that's how you can check to see if it if it'll fit either while it's wet or while it's dry whatever you're most comfortable with um, so advanced users you probably could do it ahead of time but okay that tree's perfect um, but you you know clip it off with some scissors if you wanted um, you can maybe make it taller another thing that I, I know I like to do um, is uh, after is um, this is usually too thick for me I prefer something a little bit thinner and if you look at my leather tree see how much thinner you know that is to that so I have more things I can do with this tree because I don't have to deal with all that thickness so I don't do it wet because you'll lose you lose the shape you lose the integrity but after it's baked then you go ahead and kind of dremel or sound sand down the edge here so it's a little bit thinner for your, your cantle um, but that's um, like I said do that when it's uh, dry or already baked let's see was there anything else I wanted to show you okay so for this tree and I told you it because of the um, the pommel if you want to make this into a one piece um, that you'll need to make like um, little stands or something to lift it up. So if you can see I did that. Um, I didn't use a log. I did just basically balls of clay and put it in place and um, left an opening in here because I, I like having an opening in there. Um, now this type is, um, as you can see, I trouble with symmetry. Symmetry is the issue. This side's a little bit thicker. So, and that was the clay I put in. Uh, but I did work it just a little bit more to get um, get my lip and to get the sides in. So, this is like medium advanced. This is like, this is beginner, right? This is a really quick way to make a tree because there really isn't a lot to do. Okay, and then this one here, a little bit more work because you, if you want, you, you're gonna have to like smooth out. I could do a little more work on that and put in your little lip here, right? And this is gonna be your more advanced one, so um, this is gonna give you a better shape. Um, and you can do these over and over again. 
uh, before you bake them until you get the right symmetry. And I would probably, I don't know if that's imperfect enough, I would, I probably would. See, it's got way too much here. I'm just critiquing now, but it's okay to critique them before you bake them because if it looks like you don't like them, then go ahead and, and crumple them up and try again. Um, it's easier and better and less expensive to do that um, at this stage uh, than it is to do it um, you know, after you've baked it because then you just kind of have to throw them away. Uh, but um, I wish I had a rear jockey, but you could put your rear jockey piece in here and make sure that it'll fit right. This might be a little bit tight, so you might find that you want to create an opening for that, or you might even want to just, like I did, you know, remove some of that clay. Um, I do a little bit experimenting with the, the pattern, the rear jockey and the, the front jockeys, and if you can get the whole seat piece as well, see if the seat's going to fit the way you want it. And that way, whatever pattern you're using, um, you can make sure that it works before you bake it. Now, um, one other thing to mention is that I, I said this was the first book that I wrote. Well, it was the first pattern I created, but I do have two books, uh, Tooling the Roper and uh, Parade and Pleasure Saddles, that still um, I show the clay tree. Okay, so it's still active in my other books, but this is only if, you know, you, you have a saddle pattern that you want to use and you just want to make an expensive tree so that you can, I don't know, make a saddle for every single horse in your collection, which was certainly a goal of mine for many years. Almost did it, and then I decided to just show stock and then just show saddles and ended up selling almost everything else um, that I made. But um, it... It's a versatile tree, um, and I hope that you guys will find um, a use for it. Okay? Thank you.